Hello everyone and welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, and thank you so much for joining me today. In today's tutorial, our goal is for me to show you how to use mesh vinyl. If you watch my Cricut Mystery Box unboxing, I asked during that tutorial if you wanted me to share a project to, that teaches how to use mesh vinyl. And a lot of you said, yes, you wanted to see a project like that. And I am so, I am so excited to share this with you. I cannot even express it. This is the project that I completed with mesh vinyl. My anniversary is right around the corner and this is the shirt. This is one of the shirts that I was able to do. This is my husband's shirt, shirt and it says Together 20. And this is the back of mine. It says Since 17. So when you put the shirt together, it says Together Since 2017. We are getting ready to celebrate our fifth anniversary and we are very, very excited about that. Not as excited as I am to share this project with you though. <laughs> I'm so excited with how these came out and I don't know why I waited to use the mesh vinyl because now I'm in love with it. And I don't know if I love mesh vinyl as much as I love puff or as much as I love um, flock. I think I love all of them equally. I am falling in love with all of these different types of vinyl. But at any rate, let me tell you some things to make note of as you go through this project. While I'm in Cricut Design Space, I will be there for the bulk of this tutorial because this is my first time ever creating a shirt, a design on a shirt where I did the front and the back. And I go through the full process of putting the design on the front of the shirt and then I go over and show you how to do the back. Now on my shirt, there is only mesh vinyl on the back, but as you can see, there's an offset. So I kind of want you to pay attention to that. You know, we're going to be working with that text box and making sure the offset is the right size for both shirts. Um, it's important to also note that the mesh vinyl does not require the same heat setting as the Cricut iron on vinyl. All of the vinyl that I'm using in this tutorial is Cricut vinyl. So Cricut vinyl does require some cooling down before you can peel the backing sheet away. Um, but I'm going to show you all the things to avoid. I'm going to show you all my sizing with you in case you decide to make shirts just like this, you know, with your anniversary on it. Um, but I want to share the full process with you. And at the end of this tutorial, if you find it helpful, please consider liking this video, subscribing to this channel and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. The materials I'm going to use for this project include two 100% cotton gildan shirts. I'm going to use my long standard grip Cricut green cutting mat, my purple pin pin weeding tool. I have one roll of Cricut everyday iron on. I have two rolls of Cricut everyday mesh iron on. And I have two rolls of Cricut everyday iron on in red. And I just have two rolls just in case one roll is not enough. I may not need all of this, but I have it just in case. I will be connected to my Cricut Explore Air 2. And my heat source is my um, green StarCraft 15 by 15 clamshell heat press. Okay, so without further ado, let's head on over and get the files downloaded and then right into Cricut Design Space. I am on the Design Bundles Plus membership website. And I'm going to show you the file that I'm using for this tutorial. It is this file that says Wedding SVG. I have already downloaded this file, um, but I'm going to download it again to show you what that process looks like. So I'm going to click on download. I'm going to click on download again. And when I do that, it shows up as a zipped folder in the bottom left corner of my screen. I'm going to click on that. I can see that all of these files are included with this download. I'm going to click extract all. I'm just going to go ahead and extract this. And now it is saved in my downloads folder. The two files that I'll use to upload into Cricut Design Space are, is, um, are the two that say Mr. Established and Mrs. Established. These are Microsoft Edge documents. I will um, go ahead and get them uploaded into Cricut Design Space. Remember, you have to download, then extract, then upload. The first thing we will do is work on the front of the shirt. So we'll, we'll do this in two parts. We'll do the front of the shirt first. 
Okay, so we already have our file downloaded and now we are going to upload that file into Cricut Design Space. So I'm going to click on upload and I already have them uploaded. So I'm going to click on both of these files and I'm going to add them to my canvas. Okay, when they come in, I can see that they are layered files. I know that these files are layered because once I look over here in my layers panel, I can see that they're not attached and they're not welded. Okay, so I have the files added to my canvas. Now I am going to move them apart from each other and I'm going to bring the view down on my screen. Right now my view is at 100%. I'm going to bring it down to right at about 50% and I'm still going to move these out. I am going to go to templates and I am going to open the classic t-shirts template. Now, nothing actually cuts out from here. This is just a template to let you see what the design will look like on your shirt. The shirts that I'm using are black. So I am going to go ahead and change my files to make them match what they're going to look like when they're cut. My files are going to be, these two files right here will be white. So I'm going to go ahead and change those to white right now. Change this one to white. And I'm going to change the color of the shirt. I'm going to click right here in the bottom right corner of my screen. I'm going to change and then click up here in the top of my screen. I want to change the color of the shirts to black. And I'm going to turn these grid lines off because I really don't need them. In order to turn the grid lines off, I just clicked in this open space between the two zeros. I'm going to change the size of the shirt to a men's short sleeve um, extra large. Let me change the color back to black. Okay. And this is what my shirts will look like. So for the first shirt, I'm going to resize this file to write at 10.5. I'm going to um, I'm only going to change the width of the shirt to 10.5. I'm not going to do anything to the height. I'm also going to change the width of this file to 10.5. I'm not going to do anything to the height. Okay, now that I have it changed to the size, the next thing I'm going to do is grab a text box because I need to enter the year right here. That's what this open space is for. I'm going to grab a text box and I am going to change the font to Times New Roman. So I'm just going to type in Times and I am going to type in 2017. So here you will be typing in, you know, the number of the year that, you know, that is appropriate for your, your anniversary. Okay. And I'm going to change that also to white. And I'm also going to bold that font. Okay. So I'm going to bring it down. Bring it down. Bring it down a little bit more. Okay. <clears throat> I'm bringing it down a little bit more. I think that's a little bit too big. It's kind of overshadowing Mrs. OK, and since I have this the way that I want it and it should be the exact same on my husband's shirt, I'm just going to duplicate this and bring this one over here and I will select this whole thing right here, this whole file, and I will attach this and I will do the same thing here. I'll click on this once I have it exactly where I want it. I'll select this whole file and I will attach it. So for now, I'm finished with the front of these shirts and I like the way these look. So I'm going to just move these out of the way for now. I'm going to just move them completely out of the way and I'm going to get started on the back of the shirt. Before I do that, it's best for me to go ahead and save and I can save these as anniversary shirts in progress. Okay, I'm going to click save. So if anything happens, I'm finished with the front of my shirts. All right. So now let's move over to the back of the shirts. Okay. So I'm not, I don't need to click templates to grab a shirt template because I'm going to use this same template because I'm just going to be working on the back. Then the first thing I'm going to do is grab a text box. And for this text, I'm going to change it to a font that's called college. 
And in case you hadn't noticed, my caps lock is on and I want to keep it on for this part of the tutorial. Okay. And the um, first word I'm going to type is the word together. I'm just going to click in the text box and type together. And right now I can see that this font is bold and I don't want it to be bold. I just want it to be regular. Okay. And I'm going to move this out and this font is actually going to be white. So let me go ahead and change it to white. And the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to click unlock and I'm going to change the, I'm going to keep the width at 11. I'm going to change the height to 3.0. Okay. And I like that. All right. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the enter key right after the R. I'm just going to hit enter on my keyboard and I'm going to type in the number 20. Okay. And I'm going to close that just like that. So, so far, so good. Now I'm going to click on advanced and I am going to ungroup to lines. So this will keep together as one line and the number 20 as another line. I'm going to click on the number 20 and I'm going to resize that to 9.0 by 9.0. Okay. And I'm going to move this over back over here so that it stays with it, stays with the word together. Okay. And then I am going to go ahead and lock the word together because I want it to stay at 11 um, by three. I don't want it to change at all. Now I'm going to select all of this, the word together and the number 20. I'm going to click on align. I'm going to center it horizontally. Okay. So that makes, that ensures that it is centered. Okay. So now I'm going to click on the word together, only the word together. I'm going to click on the offset and I'm going to change the offset to 20. And I'm going to click apply. Okay. You can't see the offset on the shirt because the offset changed to black, but I can see the offset right here. And the color I want my offset to be is red. Okay. So I'm going to change that color to red. So far, I love this. Okay. I'm going to click on the number 20 and I am going to click on the word, the offset. I'm going to change the offset up here to 35. I'm going to click apply and I can see that my offset is black. I'm going to change it to red. Okay. And so far I am in love with this. I'm going to select this whole thing again and I am going to click align and I'm going to click center horizontally to make sure it's still centered. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do stay with me as I'm going to click on the white layer of together. I'm going to hold my shift key and I'm going to click on the number 20 and I am going to attach it. Okay. When I do that, that attaches my white layer so that I have a white layer and I have a red layer. Now I can select this red layer and I can attach this. So that when I get ready to cut this, let me make sure I move this to the front. I can, I will have two layers to cut and I'll know exactly where to put them on the shirt. Okay. So I'm finished with the back of um, Peter's shirt. Okay. So now I'm going to do the back of my shirt. So I'm going to go to and grab a text box. Let me, before I do that, let me select this and just group it for now and move it out of the way. Okay. Let me just move it over here for now. All right. And I'm going to type the word since, and I still have my caps lock on. So I'm going to type since I'm going to hit the enter key and I'm going to type the number 17 because we've been together since 2017. Okay. I am going to change the color of it to white. I am going to click advanced. I'm going to ungroup to lines. I'm going to change the size of sense. I'm going to unlock it. 
change the width to 11, hit the enter key, and I'm going to change the height to 3.0. This is the same size as this, okay? Now, I am going to grab my offset. Remember the top offset is size at 0 0.20. So I'm gonna do that, um, 2.0. I'm going to click apply, okay? And I'm going to change that to the background color or the offset color to red. I'm going to change, choose the number. Uh oh, that's the new text box that we love. <laughs> I'm going to change the size of the number 17. I'm going to change the width to 9.0. I'm going to change the. I'm going to unlock it and change the height to 9.0 because I want this to be the same size as the number 20, okay? Now, one thing I noticed is that the one and the seven are not close enough together. So I am going to ungroup the 17. I'm gonna click on the number seven and I'm gonna use the arrow key, the left arrow key on my keyboard to move it closer to the one. So hopefully you can see that it's making slow adjustments to get closer. I'm moving it closer to the number one. Okay. I'm going to select over the one and the seven again, and I am going to group them back together. And then I'm going to go and get my offset. Remember the bottom offset is sized at 35. I'm going to hit apply and I'm going to change that bottom, that offset to red. Okay. And I love it. I love this. So now I'm going to select since and 17 and I am going to and I hope I have done this right I'm going to align this I'm going to center it horizontally perfect now since these are still ungrouped to lines I know that I can select over this 17 and move it up because it's too far away from the word since so I'm going to use the up arrow on my keyboard and just move it up closer to kind of close that line space now i could use the mouse but i find that when you move the move items with your mouse sometimes you move it more than you intend to so this is just a more exact way of making that move okay i really like the way this looks i actually i, I love the way this looks so now i'm going to do the same thing with my layers i'm going to click on the word since the white layer of it, I'm going to hold my shift key down and I'm, I'm going to click on the numbers one and seven and I'm going to attach them. OK, so I have that white layer right there and then I'm going to click on this layer of sense and I'm going to attach um, since and 17. I'm going to attach those. So now let me move this, arrange it to send it to the front and let me show you what this will look like um once i get them put on my shirts so i'm going to group this for now so our shirt the the back of our shirts will look like this and the front will have this image well that'll be my shirt and the, the front of peter's shirt will have that okay so that is what our shirts will look like if you can kind of visualize it i am finished with the designs and i am ready to click make it OK, so I'm going to click make it. And because um, Cricut Design Space is grouping my white layers and my red layers together, it is going to um, help me choose a longer standard grip mat. And I'm perfectly fine with that. The 12 by 24 mat that I shared in my materials. So I know I need to go ahead and mirror this here. I'm going to mirror my um, image on the first mat. So it's going to cut out it all of the white layer i'm going to go to my second mat i'm going to mirror that also i'm going to go to the third mat and get that mirrored and i'm going to go to the fourth mat and also get that mirrored now i think that i will i'm going to change a part of this because this bottom part right here this established mrs um, 2017 I don't want that to be in mesh so I am going to click on these three dots right here and I'm going to click move object and I'm going to move that to a new mat and I'm just going to move it to a, a gray mat I'm going to click confirm 
And I'm going to do the same thing with Mr. Because I just want that to be plain white vinyl. So I'm going to click move object and I'm going to see if it will allow me to move it there and just give me a longer mat. Let's see. Let's see if I can change this mat to a 12 by 24. Yes, yes, perfect. I'm going to click OK right here. I am going to click continue and this is my uh, laptop is going to search for my Cricut Explore Air 2. Okay. And the vinyl that I'm going to cut first is the mesh vinyl. So I'm going to choose my first mat. I'm going to go to browse all materials. I'm just going to type in mesh and do a search everyday iron on mesh. I'm going to click done. It says make sure mirror is turned on. It is. And I'm going to just cut that with default pressure. And I'm going to do the same thing for my second mat for my third, fourth and fifth mats. Those will be cut. Um, let's see. Let's see if the setting changes. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Let's see if I change this to everyday iron on pretty much the same exact cut settings. Okay, so we will get this cut and everything that I'll do from here will be back on the camera with the mesh vinyl. It is important to remember that you're going to put the vinyl on the mat with the um, backing or the clear backing um, shiny side down. This is the side that should be face up on my mat. Okay, hopefully you can see that. The side that you can peel up, that's the side that should be face up when, I'm, when you're cutting heat transfer vinyl. So I'm gonna get this, I'm just gonna keep it rolled up like this and then kind of line it up at the top. Now I will use my brayer to, um, Make sure that this vinyl is adhered to my mat. I will open my Cricut Explore Air 2, get my mat loaded into my machine, making sure that the mat is under both of these guides right here. And I will click the flashing C to get this cut out. have one, two, three, four, five long standard grip mats. I am going to get all of this weeded out. People tease me for having a lot of materials, but I always say stay ready so you don't have to get ready. I have Peter's shirt right here. It is an extra large. There's already kind of a crease down the middle, but I'm going to add another crease. So I'm just gonna fold it in half before I go over to my heat press. Instead of moving you over and then moving back, I'm gonna fold it in half here. You know, you can also just check right here where the, the armpits meet. I'm gonna fold it in half and then I'm gonna go over and give it a quick five second press at my heat press. And I'm gonna come back and while I have a crease down the middle. This will be Peter's shirt. So I can fold this in half just to make sure, you know, it's actually going to be centered correctly on the shirt. So I can just get a crease down the middle and then just line this up with the crease. I have my shirt on the heat press. The heat press is set for 300 degrees for 15 seconds. I'm gonna put a sheet of Teflon right on top and I'm gonna press this first. 
firm pressure for 15 seconds. I am going to move this shirt to the side and let it cool off a little bit. You increase the pressure. I have a crease right down the middle. Just want to eyeball it. I hope that it's straight. And I have the front of his shirt completely finished. So now I will do the back of his shirt. So I wanna turn it over. And for this, I wanna do the red layer first. I am so excited about this. I am so excited about this. let it cool just a little bit now I had to do a different cut on mine because I made a mistake on my first cut but that's okay I still have my heat press set to 300 degrees um, and I'm only going to press this once again for seven or eight seconds I'm gonna have to line this up because I cut it too short the first time so I'm gonna have to be careful about that While my heat press is heating up to 315, I'm going to be lining up my mesh vinyl to go on top right here. And to say I'm in love with this will be an understatement. I'm trying my best not to scream because <laughs> I am in love. I am in love. I am in love. <laughs> I'm in love. I am in love with this. Oh my goodness. Okay. My heat press has reached 315 degrees. I am going to use a Teflon sheet. I mean, I am going to use a sheet of parchment paper and a Teflon sheet on top of that. Not butcher paper. I'm using parchment paper, then te a Teflon sheet. I'm gonna press this for the full 30 um, seconds. Okay, so I just opened my heat press. I'm going to try to zoom you in a little bit so you can get a better view of this awesome goodness. Ooh. 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 Iron on mesh is a cool peel, so I'm just going to move my shirt over to the side for one second but you can see it before i peel the backing away look at how gorgeous that is look at how gorgeous this shirt is <laughs> press this one while i'm waiting for that one to cool off remove my backing sheet I'm in love. So here's my shirt. Let me go ahead and peel the backing away. The shirt is completely cooled down. I can already tell you I love it. I can already tell you, I love it. I don't know why I have been waiting to use mesh vinyl. I guess I had no idea what to do with it, but now I do. And 
is on. I am going to remove the backing. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is mine. I love that string. So this is the finished product and you already know what I'm gonna say. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love the way these turned out. I love the way these turned out. So if you found this tutorial helpful, please consider liking this video. If you felt like we accomplished our goal, please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Thank you so much for joining me today. And thanks for watching. Bye.